Hello and welcome to this presentation on the CRM fundraising system. In this particular demonstration, I'm going to discuss with you what does the fundraising module do, what does it integrate to, and what are the benefits of using it. And we'll specifically cover details about fundraising campaign management, how to establish fundraising campaigns and solicit funds, including the fund accounting features of the system that allow for the proper distribution of revenue as it arrives into different discrete funds for different purposes. And then we'll look at reporting and tracking the progress of the fundraising activity and specifically ways that CRM will expedite the ability for an inbound telephone call, for example, to be handled to actually receive funds from an interested donor. After this presentation, should you be interested in more information, our contact information is found here. We'd be happy to hear from you. So let's get started. The fundraising module is a function of Sage CRM. So the user would log in. Sage CRM is provided by Sage Software, one of the world's largest business application software providers. And CRM comes fully integrated into the Sage 300 financial accounting suite. To start, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a particular donor's profile in CRM. And what we're going to see is that there is a fundraising option here. The fundraising option is the first place where we can go as a user of the system to see what different campaigns has this particular individual been solicited for in terms of uh, various different asks. We refer to them as asks, where we will request them to donate to a particular fund. Here are different times that this person has been asked for money, and we can see the status of each one of these requests. So this particular request from February is pending. That means that we've asked them for funds, but we have not yet received response. The item here we can see is committed. That means that we've asked them for funds, they've responded, they've committed to submitting funds, but we have not yet received those funds. And then if they had actually concluded the donation and we had received the funds, then you would see one here that shows as complete. If we click on a particular entry, we can see what is the configuration uh, for this particular contribution. So this person was asked and or committed uh, to donating $150. In this case, we can see that they committed. And this $150 has been determined to be split amongst two different funds, bursaries and scholarships. And they've contributed or they're planning to contribute $100 to bursaries and $50 to scholarships. That's part of the fund accounting functions where a donation of $150 can be either automatically distributed across multiple funds or, as you'll see, uh, when we actually take a new donation, the user can actually choose which one of the funds that should be uh, distributed across. But before we actually take a donation, I'd like to go into some of the setup features of the system to see how we configure that and what the various different options happen to be. Those features are found in the administration area of CRM. The fundraising module is found here for contributions, and here we can manage contribution types. So you can have as many different contribution types or campaign types that you would like in the system at the same time. I have one here for the 2017 scholarship campaign, but you could similarly have another one for general fundraising, for specific programs and so forth that you might be operating. In this particular contribution type is where I can define some basic information, such as when is this campaign valid for? So we're collecting funds for this, for example, for the entire year of 2017, perhaps starting earlier in 2016. We can also, of course, give it a name, and we can define what wave item it's related to. Wave items is a concept in Sage CRM as part of the marketing features of CRM. The marketing menu is found here, where you can define a marketing campaign and the activities that occur inside of it, such as specific advertisements placed in magazines or newspapers or television or radio, um, as well as collections of those activities. They could be telephone campaigns or online campaigns, Google AdWord campaigns, etc. Those can all be defined in the marketing section of CRM. That's not a topic for today's uh, demonstration. But then you can tie wave items here in the fundraising system into the marketing system within CRM to combine the power of both of those together. You can define a standard amount that you wish to ask for. 
when you uh, solicit money for this cam campaign. So often, for example, in either political campaigns uh, or school campaigns, you might say, you know, we're looking for a standard $25 donation or a standard $100 donation. Um, now, the donor can vary that amount, but that would be the starting point for when you call them up or you email them. That's the amount that we're hoping that they would contribute. Now, below here, we have the ability to define the funds that are going to be funded by this particular campaign. So when somebody makes a donation to the 2017 scholarship campaign, how's that money going to be distributed internally within the organization? And you can see I've got two entries here, and I'm saying that for every dollar that's donated, 75% of that dollar is going to go into scholarships and 25% into bursaries. Now this is configurable. As you set these different funds up, you can say what is the standard split of any money uh, that's contributed that would go to this particular one. You can also set integration points into the accounting system. So, of course, when somebody makes a donation, that money is going to end up in the accounting system as an accounts receivable invoice. Uh, and that invoice would then have the inbound monies on it as line items. So if the, let's say, $100 was split across bursaries and scholarships, the invoice will have two lines on it, one for bursaries, one for scholarships, and the appropriate percentage of the money would go to each one. That, of course, then corresponds to general ledger accounts for where the money is accumulated from a revenue perspective. Um, now we can also set what's the minimum value we would accept on a donation. So if we don't take donations less than $5, for example, we might configure that. We can say what's the maximum value, should you wish to configure a maximum. Uh, we can do that. And then what's the default value? Uh, when they first start creating a donation, again, what would you like the default amount be? The user can change it, but you can set a default to allow the setup process to go faster. So I have two of those entries in the system, one for bursaries and one for scholarships. And we can see that the scholarship one is set to be 75% of any monies that are received. So that's the setup of the contribution type. So once we've got that, then we can get down to the business of actually taking donations. Now, there's two different ways, of course, that donations can be received. One is spontaneously someone calls or contacts you and says, I'd like to donate money. The other one is that you could solicit them for money. So that could be by way of a telephone call, an email, an in-person visit, an ad that you put on a website. Any of those are ways that you could solicit funds. So if we want to set up uh, solicitation, we refer to them as asks in the system, we can use this fundraising module function here where we can actually go ahead and configure the system to request money from individuals. Now the CRM system itself has functionality called groups and in groups you can define lists of people. So if you have a list of past donors or potential donors in the CRM system, you can define a group of those people on any criteria that you might like, by address, by postal code, by phone number, by donation history, by whatever. And then once you have that group, you can use that to do an ask, right? So this particular one is set up to be use this, per, this group. So based on this group of people, which was defined in the group section in CRM, I would like to uh, ask for money for the 2017 scholarship campaign. And there's different types of asks. You can see I can send an email, I can generate a task, which would be used for outbound telephone campaign generally. I could generate a letter if I was going to print postcards or letters and so forth to send out through the mail. Or it could be an advertisement online. If you use the advertisement online function, then of course on your website you could put a nice banner up that says click here to donate to the scholarship campaign and when they click it will bring them through into this configured ask and kickstart the process of taking a donation online. The system does include our online self-service portal which allows donors and other people to manage their accounts, create new accounts, make donations online, insert credit cards and pay online etc in a secure environment. Uh, so that's part of the solution as well. This particular one here is a task, which I'm saying is an outbound phone call. And so because I've chosen an outbound phone call, it's given me fields here to schedule the phone calls that I'd like to make. So I can, for example, say I want to make 25 phone calls a day. These are the three people on the staff that I would like to be making the phone calls. And I'd like to start making them on March the 1st or whatever the date is you want to start. Now, depending on how many people are in the group, if each one of these people makes 25 calls a day, that's 
75 calls total in a day. If let's say there was 2,000 people in the group, um, that would take some time. So you can say which days of the week you want to make calls. And then when you complete this process and hit save, it will go ahead and schedule 25 calls per day for each of these users for as long as it takes to get through the entire list of people in the group and complete that particular drive, right? We're saying here that we're asking for $100. Now the donor could give more or less, um, but that's our standard ask amount. And we'll accept donations from $5 up to a maximum of that many dollars. And then we can tie this into one of those wave items in the marketing system within CRM as well. That allows you to track the results of, say, a particular advertisement. So if people are calling in on a number saying, I saw your ad in the newspaper, and this particular telephone campaign or whatever is tied to that newspaper ad, then you can see what the results of that newspaper ad would be through the reporting features of the system. This item is pending. It's published to the web. By doing that, as I said, you could have these things online. So someone could go to your website and see these are the things we're currently raising money for. One of them is the annual fundraising campaign for scholarships. And they could click to begin the donation process to one or multiple different types of campaigns that you happen to be running. The task message here is what would actually show up in the uh, task that's put on the person's calendar. It would say, you know, we're calling to ask for funds for a particular scholarship, etc. This can be a script. So you could have in here, hello, and then you could say um, person first name, and then on and on what you'd like to say, and that will actually be merged with the person's information so that when the task pops up on the outbound caller's uh, screen, it would say exactly what they should read when the phone rings. Hello, Mr. Barnes. This is John calling from whatever the organization is, and I'm calling to ask you if you'd be interested in donating to our annual 2017 campaign. And you can put that all in there so that it would be right there in front of the user when they actually make the call. Now, if you make other uh, selections here, such as email, then you're not going to have the telephone functions uh, that appear down there. But instead, when you hit continue, it's going to take you into the bulk emailing portion of the system where you can send out an email uh, that's sent to all the members of the group. And that email would include a link through, generally, a link through to the website where using those electronic tools, they could make their donations themselves. And then, of course, what the contents of the email are is up to you. You could have them call in if you'd like uh, to take um, donations that way. So that's how you set up to actually ask someone for money. So now if you have asked them for money, as we established earlier, on the particular person's profile in CRM, on the fundraising tab, we'll be able to see all the different times that they've been asked for money. So if Ronald Black here calls up, uh, especially if the CRM system is tied into your phone system, you know their profile will load as the phone is ringing. You can go to the fundraising tab and say, okay, yeah, I can see that you were uh, asked for money on the 16th of September, and then I can just click on this item to complete the donation process. So that's the advantage of asking for money originally, is it can expedite the process when they actually make the call. Now, we don't always do that. Sometimes make people make unsolicited donations. So I can always come into this tab, and instead of clicking on an existing item, I can click New to start a new one. So if someone just calls up and says, I'd like to donate funds, this is how I could do it. Um, the, organ the CRM system handles both organizations and individual people. Um, so if it's an organization, then it would be selected, and then you could choose who is the staff person or individual within that company or business um, that made the call about the donation. Um, in this particular case, um, I'm just going to choose Ronald Blackwood. Which type of contribution do they want to make? So they're contributing to the 2017 campaign. You can configure different frequencies. I have the system enabled for one-time donations, but you could, of course, have periodic donations, monthly, quarterly, annually. Um, you would set up what those different parameters are in the administrative section. Um, if they responded to a particular advertisement, um, you could choose that one, again, to tie into the marketing system. How do they intend to pay? I'll say here cash today, or it could be credit card, uh, any one of the credit card types. And then what is the amount of the donation they'd like to make? So I'm going to say $250 in this particular case, and I'll go ahead and save that. Now, once you've done that, the system has gone ahead and applied that fund 
distribution rule that was set up for this particular campaign. So you can say it's taken the $250 and it's distributed across scholarships and bursaries on a 75-25 basis, which is fine if the cus or if the donor has no interest in changing it. This is how we have as an as a as a charitable or a nonprofit organization have decided we want the money to be distributed. But sometimes a donor will say, well, what's the money going to go to? And you'll say, well, 75% uh, of it's going to scholarships and 25% to bursaries. And the donor may say, well, I'm not really interested in donating to the scholarship fund. I'd like to put all of the money into bursaries, in which case the user here can go ahead and change that and say, I want to put zero to scholarships and 250 to bursaries. The total of these entries here, of course, need to uh, equal the total of the donation overall. And if they're not, then the user would be blocked. But once I'm satisfied that my distribution is okay, and let me just maybe rebalance it a little bit here, I go ahead and click continue. After a few seconds, the system will have completed the calculation of the invoice, and this is what an invoice may look like. Now, you have full control over the screens to control which fields are there uh, and in which sequence and order they appear. On my demonstration system, I have virtually everything enabled. Um, Issues such as sales taxes and so forth are also handled by configuration. Sales taxes would typically not be applicable on donations. Um, but there's the header component, so what's our document total before tax? Um, and then, of course, if there were any applicable sales taxes. And then below, we can see the two lines that have been added on the invoice for 200 and for 50. Um, and, of course, our total. Now, from this point forward, the user can go ahead and, and generate an invoice using the print documents function. Um, that is something that you could send off to the donor if they needed one or if they wanted one um, for purposes of requisitioning a check or something like that. Um, you can also use that print function to generate uh, your receipts, tax receipts. So the system does have capabilities to generate uniquely serialized receipts. Um, it's based on a template. You could have multiple different templates. So if you issued different templates for different aspects of the organization, let's say that you had um, a scholarship fund or something, and then you had a school, right? And they may ha be different organizations technically, and they issue either different sequences of numbers or they issue different uh, receipts with different logos or something on them. You could have multiple different templates. You can generate and file into the library, which is just for internal purposes. You can generate and send to one of the contacts by email if one of them has email. In this case, it appears we don't have an email address. Or you can generate it and send it to an email address of your choice. You can also choose an email template that you want to use. If you have a standard one for donors that you want, um, you can vary the subject line. You can attach other files, such as um, brochures or PDFs, etc., that you want to go along with your invoice and or your receipt. And of course, you can type details into the email message that you would like to say in the body of your email. And then you just hit continue and the system will generate the receipt uh, and or invoice and send that off to the donor. So from there, it goes on to the standard order processing capabilities. You could apply payment. The apply payment functions are found here. Um, you can either uh, do credit card or cash or check. You know, the system will support any number of them. If you do credit card, there's integrated credit card functionality into the system. Uh, and so this is, it will ask you for the credit card information or it will allow you to choose from a credit card previously used by this particular donor. Um, the system does not store credit card information internally. What happens is that the credit card information is sent to your bank your bank securely stores the information, and then the bank sends a token back to the CRM system, which can be used for future donations. That's also what's used for scheduled donations. So if you had done, say, monthlies, um, the system will keep that token on file, and then each month it'll process a recurring uh, donation on that particular account. Otherwise, I can type in the information here and then hit process to actually charge the card. I'll go ahead and choose an existing card. This one expires in 2018 and we'll go ahead and click process. Okay, once the payment has been processed, we can see the total amount of the payments and the balance outstanding on this particular invoice. And now this particular transaction will be queued up to flow over into the accounts receivable module 
in the accounting system. There's no data re-entry of any kind that needs to be done. Now this goes to a number of benefits of this solution over other fundraising systems that just do fundraising. We have fundraising capabilities here that flow into the standard accounts receivable module, and that's the same module that can be used for other aspects of your organization's operations. Any other types of product sales that you might have, let's say you sell hats or books or manuals, etc. Um, other sorts of revenue, government grants, etc., can all come through that module. And then Sage 300, of course, is a fully functional accounting system, so it'll also do all of your accounts payable uh, and all of your other general accounting as well. So you get the power of the full accounting system, the power of the full CRM system, and then, of course, the power of the fundraising system as well. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. If you have any further questions, please let us know. We would be happy to answer them, and we would be happy to set up any sort of a uh, individualized presentation for you on how the features and functions of this solution could be specifically implemented in your organization. Thank you.